So without further ado, I now request Professor Ankit Kumar to escort Mr. Prashant Prakash onto the dais. Thank you, sir. Man of great achievements, to speak a few words about the speaker, Mr. Prashant Prakash is determined and caring leader and has grip on both technology and operations. He has a remarkable ability to find innovative solutions to complex business problems and his commitment to his customers is exceptional. He began investing in Indian technology startups much before they acquired global attention. He started his career as co-founder of Erasmic, one of India's early stage funds. He is also the founder of two enterprises in the internet and multimedia publishing domains. As a key member of Excel's India team, he focuses on consumer internet services, online marketplaces and SaaS. He has led investments in Agrostar, Bluestone, Book My Show, Clevertap, Fab Hotels, Healthcare Magic, Holiday IQ, Holiday Me, Home Lane, Prop Tiger, Rento Mojo, T Box, Quick Liver, Quick Pod, and other early stage companies. Currently, he is a partner at Excel Partners. We are fortunate to have this eminent personality with us today, whom we can call a man of direction, a man of determination, and a man of destination. On behalf of the entire college, I extend a hearty welcome to you, sir. I now request Mr. Prashant to kindly take over the session. I think we are fortunate to, I'm fortunate to be here. Uh, I know Mr. Manjunath Bandari uh, now for about 10 plus years. Uh, he's been a very dear friend and uh, I was uh, at the same, I, think, I, I was in the same hall uh, about uh, I think three, four years. But does anybody here, was anybody here when I last was in this? Probably, yeah, I think it's uh, maybe uh, the, the last previous batches. But uh, uh, again, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the management to, uh, invite, to have invited me here and given me this opportunity. I, being somebody who has been with startups uh, now for about 14, 15 years, uh, so Diksha was asking me, you know, you should come to our campus, I said, I'll, I'll come there, provided uh, I get an opportunity to talk to students. You know, I, I just love, uh, you know, speaking to young uh, aspiring entrepreneurs. And uh, um, for me, that's uh, um, what, you know, gives me uh, the, the drive and the pleasure to continue to do what I'm doing. Uh, you know, we, a little bit about Axel, and uh, you'll understand what I'm saying. Uh, so we are a, very early stage fund. So we started out with a small fund called Erasmic and uh, um, uh, it was a small $10 million fund. One of our first investments was Mu Sigma, which became an extremely large analytics company. But uh, we were fortunate then to be the early investors in Flipkart and Mintra and Book My Show and some of these companies. But uh, we have always stuck to being early stage entrepreneurs. Uh, we could have, uh, you know, moved up the value chain and done bigger investments. But uh, we really love working with very young startups. You know, when it's just an idea, uh, you know, the, the just the thrill of uh, the unknown and uh, helping uh, entrepreneurs bootstrap these companies and, you know, flesh out their ideas and help them find the product fit and scale is really what uh, drives a lot of us at Axel. So that's uh, what Axel just wanted to get a sense for so how many of you are entrepreneurs? Uh, I heard there's a mix of students and entrepreneurs. Uh, how many of you are entrepreneurs here? I think there are, I, I saw a lot of entrepreneurial activity on top. Uh, so I'm sure some of you belong to that. But, and uh, which, which, I mean, are you all in the final year, second year, third year, which, which year? First and second years, okay. So, I was just thinking, I mean, they said, okay, talk about something about startups. So, um, and what, what, it, what it takes to build startups. So I thought, you know, what really makes sense is uh, give you a framework 
for thinking about uh, you know when when you want to do uh, i mean today you you probably will either post your mba uh, try to uh, join a startup do a startup or join a large company but uh, be uh, impactful in that company so how do you be in, impactful in anything that you're doing for everything that you do today digital transformation is key right so that's what really is impacting businesses so i thought uh, that's a relevant topic no matter what path you choose uh, like i said if you do your own startup join a startup or and or join a large company or a medium sized company you know you need to be relevant today to what is going to fundamentally change uh, the path of whatever you're doing and digital transformation is impacting everything now the first thing that comes to people's mind is oh digital transformation is about leveraging the internet is about leveraging the mobile phone whatever right but i think very few people understand uh, how to think about it with a framework right the framework that i'm trying to kind of give people visibility today is how each aspect of digital transformation impacts some aspect of the business uh, it could be the efficiency of the business the revenues of the business the distribution the supply chain the demand chain uh, if, uh, the customer experience that you get out of your product so where is really digital transformation impacting your business is the big takeaway i want everybody so that's the big takeaway so in the end so the other thing about today's uh, session is i wanted to be interactive a little bit right so every digital transformation i'll talk about i want to hear uh, ideas about that and uh, don't I, i don't want you to kind of think that we're talking a lot of rocket science here today we all uh, interact with these products on a daily basis so just open your mind and when 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 you see a particular disruption you're actually uh, you i mean a lot of you have embraced it you're using it and uh, you should be able to relate to it so so only when you relate and can think of uh, a correlation between the impact that the digital disruption is uh, kind of making into that business that's when you can think of a new business uh, when when you can make that correlation so that's the whole idea here so uh, what is transformation right so uh, transformation is fundamental uh, change in um, how businesses evolve right so every 10 years every 15 years you see a new set of companies that come up right so there was uh, i mean if you look if you think globally uh, there was the whole software era which microsoft and oracle and some of those companies defined and and after that you you had a, a new era which google uh, defined which was more about uh, you know just internet uh, search and those kinds of things and then you had the social uh, media era which uh, facebook kind of defined and now you have everything around artificial intelligence and so on which uh, you know you'll probably see a new set of companies defined so i think it's important to understand you know what what really uh, kind of defined uh, transformation in each of these cases what what aspect of the business was impacted did it impact the revenues of the business and revenues usually is about uh, how many customers are you reaching uh, at what price are you reaching uh, what Uh, what's what's the cost that is taking to, to to reach that customer set? So that's conversion, and then the price at which you are able to position the product and sell that product, which is usually a function of the customer experience and the quality of the customer experience. The better the customer experience, you know, the better uh, you know. That's the whole iPhone uh, paradigm, right? They are able to price the product at whatever they are able to price because of the superior or differentiated customer experience they. are able to provide and uh, uh, i'll later talk about you know uh, how how marketplaces and other um, um, aspects of digital transformation impact cost and efficiency right and um, uh, so is is this kind of uh, uh, did, did you uh, have any other idea of transformation i mean uh, is is there something missing here in terms of you know uh, transformation of businesses that uh, what 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 are the aspect of businesses uh, do you think 
get impacted by uh, uh, the, these kinds of transformations, right? So there's there's usually you know uh, a lot of innovation uh, today around uh, you know there's the societal impact and there is a lot of environmental impacts that underlie you know a lot of these uh, digital transformations today and that's kind of an overarching thing but that aside i think this largely defines a lot of uh, what what impact there is so i think the first thing i'll talk about is uh, you know something that's fundamentally changed everything in our lives in the last few years right so um, i think there is uh, one uh, data point here they i mean we kind of flatlined on digital penetration in this country because of the cost of the pc or the laptop so we kind of hit a plateau where there was uh, you know really no growth so this was in the era just prior to smartphones right and uh, just in the last four three to four years so we have twice the number of smartphone users as pc users and most of our companies today get about 60 to 70 percent of their consumption and their traffic uh, through smartphones um, and i think the uh, projection is that uh, uh, it will be around, we'll have about a half a billion so almost half of uh, the more than half of the adult and the teenage population in this country would have a smartphone um, so you know so this is the uh, question part that i was talking about so for a business really how how should a business think of a smartphone right one is uh, it's great for them to say okay we have thousands of customers today with smartphones right what does it mean for a business uh, to say that all my customers have a smartphone what does it give a business How does your how, how 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 does it really impact your business to say that now uh, you know um, a, a lot more of my customers have a smartphone? What should they be thinking about? Yeah, I can hear somebody wanting to say something. Sorry, goodwill. Okay, so how do you how do you kind of generate that goodwill? They have a phone. You need to generate goodwill for your company. Uh, how do you do that? Sorry. Yeah. So you do that by first giving them access to your application. Great. So uh, is that good enough to give them access to the application? So you want to generate goodwill. So you provide an application on that phone. You want to reach your customers. Then. What what do you need to do? Yeah, so you need interaction, and what kind of interaction do you need? Sorry. So you need yeah. Right. Yes. Yes, so one is you need to be able to provide the ability to interact with the services that your company is offering through that. So uh, it's, it's, it's about providing a great experience, right? So you need to be able to provide services or an application or anything that helps the customer interact with your product in a very elegant and engaging manner so it's the engagement that you are able to provide that is the other dimension that you would want to think about right it's it's the quality of experience and the level of engagement that you are able to create with your user that you need to think about can can you tell me which which is uh, uh, which in your mind uh, is the application today that uh, you know defines uh, uh, this this 
thing that I just defined, you know, great experience, great engagement. What, what are some examples that really provide that? No, I, I think I want other people to, sorry, yeah, I want other people to also interact. What, what, what I mean, I, I've told you what defines experience and engagement, right? So which, which companies that you interact with today provide you that kind of an experience? Ola, great. Sorry? Do you, do you think uh, some of the bank applications provide you that kind of an engaging experience? Which, which bank application do you use? Okay, you like that application. Good. Then? Recharge. Sorry? Amazon. Flipkart. Swiggy. Great. So, so I think the, you, you've seen that a lot of these companies have actually transformed how they reach their customers through the phone. And, uh, and you'll, you'll just see what now, uh, the, now that we've understood that you need to provide this great engaging customer experience, we'll kind of uh, look at other, other aspects. Oh, so, sorry, I didn't mean to. So one, one of the uh, uh, aspects of any business or service is to give the customer an experience like I said, of what am I offering, right? If I am a real estate portal, usually it's about, you know, what really uh, is that offer, right? If I am Swiggy, then it's about, you know, which, which uh, uh, restaurants can I order from? And once I know which restaurant I want to order from, uh, what's the menu, right? So I think there is, uh, you know, very elegant and interesting ways in which this kind of cataloging is uh, transforming how companies provide the services. So if you, for example, if you look at, uh, so what's, what's an interesting uh, um, representation uh, that you have seen outside of the real estate example? Uh, you know, so, so if you just look at, you know, how things have changed, you know, initially uh, um, it, it was text messages that kind of gave you a very, so, so the thing that you will notice here is that it's getting more and more immersive. The ability to engage with the catalog is being, is being redefined as technology evolves, right? So you are able to get a better experience, uh, you know, remotely. So the whole virtual experience is being transformed, right? So whatever catalog or whatever services your business is offering, you need to, when, when, you, when you think about this transformation, you need, to, uh, you need to kind of put yourself in the customer's shoes and say, you know what, this customer is remote. How can I give the customer an almost real experience of my product or service, right? So can you give me an example of um, a product or service that you have seen recently uh, that you said, hey, you know what, uh, um, this, is, this is so rich. This is, uh, it's like almost being there, right? Uh, what, what is, what, can you give me an example of any such experience that you've come across where, you know, it's transformed uh, your thinking on, you know, I, I don't, you know, like three years ago, I never would think of engaging or interacting with this kind of a product or service remotely, but now, uh, you know what, I'm so comfortable engaging with this product remotely. So can you give me an example of something that really has transformed your belief, your fundamental belief, uh, just because of the way uh, the product is represented or the experience of the catalog or uh, what you're trying to buy and purchase is being made a lot better. What's, what's a good example of that? Airbnb. So if you look at Airbnb, so one of the things fundamentally Airbnb changed uh, is, uh, you know, the, the founders um, uh, figured out, I mean, they, they went through a phase where they saw that customers were not renting these homes because of the way the homes were being represented, right? So if you don't get a good feel for the home, you're not, it's, it's about trust, right? It's about going and staying in some place. So the, so the thing that uh, the point that I'm trying to make here 
is because it's a remote virtual interaction building trust is a lot is is a, is really central to this engagement right so the and visual imagery plays a big role like what airbnb did they actually had uh, you know they sent their own photographers to actually uh, initially uh, you know photograph the founders themselves went and photographed these homes in the early days you know that's kind of history there right so uh, so that's how important what other other examples of uh, something that uh, has given you a great experience even though you're remote and uh, you feel that hey you know what i'm now ready to consume this without going to a store or without actually physically going somewhere sorry ha huh, okay so i think a lot of tour uh, uh, travel places and uh, you know travel experiences you are kind of getting more uh, uh, remote destination information uh, virtually which gives you a better feel for the place that you will visit so it's in the same realm as uh, Yeah, I mean Sahadri has a virtual. Oh, nice, nice. So it's a it for students who are remote uh, uh, and want to get a feel for the college. Uh, uh, it gives them a great immersive experience. I recently joined the college, but before I physically come into the college, I take another degree to another college. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's a, it's a great application where you want to give the feel, a feel for a remote place. Uh, I think the other, uh, I, I think a lot of fashion is being transformed, right? Mm. if if you look at uh, you know all this virtual makeovers and uh, uh, being able to see yourself in um, dresses otherwise that you wouldn't uh, you know even uh, imagine right so i think uh, uh, that that's a, another good example but so so the so the basic uh, you know summary of this point is that uh, when you are thinking of an experience think of the fact that the customer is remote the customer needs to build trust in your product or service and how can you give the right experience for the customer to build that trust so that's the fundamental thing so i th i think uh this point kind of dovetails into so once you have the customer engaging with your product what is the next important thing for you as a business the customer is downloaded your app the customer is uh, engaging with your app uh, what what really should you start thinking about next reviews so you want to collect uh, data about the customer's experience what else would you uh, what what other kinds of data would you want to collect on the customer's experience one was reviews which is great so uh, um, you know if if somebody went to an airbnb you want to collect a review of what did they think of the experience what other aspects you think of data is useful um, can you think of some examples what is important uh, a company like ola what data should they collect quality of the okay yeah so that's that's so that's one important so i think uh, that's again with the reviews but i think as a fun, so what a company so companies really uh, you know th there are two three different dimensions of this aspect of a heat map right a heat map lets you know what element of the app is the customer engaging with most right so it gives you a better idea that you know what customers are always looking at maybe uh, you know this aspect of my app right and i maybe that's the thing that i really need to work more on right so you use data to really get a feel for what element of your product is the customer engaging more on right if the customer is in a transaction app they are first looking at what they want to consume right then they get 
more details on what they want to consume. And if they're not consuming the product after that, that is a data point that you need to really get a sense for, right? So that's, that's uh, what's called a funnel, right? A customer funnel, right? The customer first get, builds awareness of your product. After the customer builds awareness of your product, the customer then evaluates your offering. So, and then your product becomes one of the things that the customer considers. And then if your product is good, then the customer actually consumes the product. But in each of these steps, you need to collect data on the customer's engagement with your product or service. That's what a heat map lets you do. And that's what some of these customer engagement tools also let you do, right? So just to kind of recap, you first need to understand the value of what distribution on an app can do for your company. Once you've understood that, you need to be cognizant that this is a remote virtual engagement with the customer. So you want to provide the right experience and build the right kind of trust with the customer for this remote engagement. And while you're doing that, you need to collect data to see how do you refine your product. So really what data lets you do is helps you refine your product. One, it helps you refine your product. Second, it helps you kind of identify blind spots in your customer engagement, right? There are things that, the, or, or actually also figure out things about your product and the way the customers engage that you might not have thought about before. So it's, it's important for both. One, it's, it's important to understand where customers are hitting a roadblock with your product. And it's also important to understand what customers are looking for in your product, right? So data plays a big role in both of these. Uh, can you think of uh, uh, some couple, I mean, maybe one other use case of what data will uh, help you do? So we'll look at it a little bit further, but we'll, we'll talk, so this whole idea of personalization, right? So data helps you personalize the experience. So we'll talk about it. So while we are creating this product, right, I thought this is the right time to introduce this idea of, you know, your product is not uh, in isolation, right? There is, there is two parts to the product. One, you have the customer, and many products have also a supplier on the other end. And that's the marketplace paradigm, right? So, you know, we all have seen multiple marketplace. So if you, uh, if you, if you think of, uh, you know, very traditional marketplaces, you know, I mean, one is the e-commerce marketplace, right? What are the other networks that you're familiar with? Can, can you give me an example of a network that all of you interact with on a daily basis? Facebook, right? So the idea of a network is that, you know, multiple people come together, right, to be able to provide an environment that lets you do a, 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 a type of transaction or an engagement, right? In Facebook, it just lets you connect with people and engage with people. But the idea of a network is this whole thing called a network effect, and which is what you should, so I wanted to introduce that before I talk about marketplaces, because that is central to a marketplace. A marketplace will not provide exponential value to its constituents, which is the suppliers and the consumers, if, you, if you're not able to understand this concept of a network effect. So how many of you have actually, uh, heard about this idea of a network effect before? Probably not. Yeah, I think it's yeah, the first, second year, so you might not have. But, but the idea is that every, every node that gets added to the network improves the utility of the network in an exponential manner, right? So that's the idea of the network effect. And if, going back to the example of Facebook, if you know, you know that once, uh, 
uh, uh, your friend gets added, but you know what exponentially is improving there? What is the exponential? So, so you let's say you started with just yourself on the network, and then you added a friend on the network, right? What is the exponential uh, impact, or what is the uh, added impact of just adding a friend here? Sorry. Ah, friends of friends. Very good. So, for every friend that you add, that person now has ten more friends who are who have been added. So, who will potentially get on the same network? So, that is what you know. Um, you will see now. Um, I, I mean, you'll you'll see kind of demonstrated. So, that's you know. In in fact, if you see that classical definition of uh, any network effects, they'll start with this idea of a telephone, right? So, if everybody who gets added to a telephone network, right? So, now the modern age, uh, I guess, equivalent of a telephone network is Facebook. But let's look at a marketplace, right? What's uh, the example of a marketplace that we all use today? Flipkart, right? So, a Flipkart is a marketplace. You have consumers on one end, and then you have suppliers on the other end. What uh, is important to understand here is that for every consumer that gets added, there is an impact on the network. And for every supplier that's added, there is a, another impact on the network. And a combination of these two, I mean, just going back to the example of what Diksha is saying in Airbnb, uh, what's, the, what's the network effect on Airbnb? So the more properties that get added, in a particular area, right? The more propensity the, there is, there is more propensity of you actually looking at, you know, staying in an Airbnb in that area, right? So if you if you think of uh, going to let's say, so there's this whole idea of uh, options for the user, right? Any network improves the number of options, and hence you kind of gravitate towards using that network. If there are no options for the user, I don't think any uh, network does great if you just had one option, right? So whether it's uh, uh, Swiggy uh, providing you uh, restaurant options, the more the options, the more you gravitate towards using that network. So so that's quite that's quite clear, right? And the other thing that it provides is transparency in pricing. That's the um, uh, you know the other big uh, impact, right? So uh, if you could understand uh, and compare options of what's available in a particular area that where you want to order food, you want to stay in a place. If you can very transparently compare pricing, isn't that uh, you know a great benefit? So that's the other big benefit. So so there's and for for the sub. For the suppliers, it gives them an easy way to access large pools of customer, right? And going back to the Airbnb example, if I'm a, a, a provider in, let's say, in a particular area in Kor Mangla, right? If I just added, so let's assume that there was no network, there was no Airbnb kind of network. So if I was the only Company, I'm sorry, sorry. If I was the only provider uh, providing a Airbnb facility in Kormangla, nobody is going to come over there, right? But if I'm part of a pool of options in Airbnb in Kormangla, so suddenly just myself, just adding to that pool, provides me. Um, uh, a, a, I, I get compared now with the whole other host of options and. Uh, there is a chance that I'll get a customer to stay with me. So, is this uh, quite clear? Is um, can you think of uh, any other? So, give me one or two other examples of. Uh, uh, so, we just talked about Swiggy. We talked about Flipkart. Uh, we talked about. So, there's another uh, big uh, service that you use on a daily basis. What's that? What's the network effect? OLX. Yes. 
OLX is a good example. Ah, food Panda is like Swiggy, but maybe another area uh, like uh, uh, we spoke about food, we, we spoke about classified. Yeah. Trivago, yes. See, Trivago is not a network. See, Trivago is a tool. It is lever Trivago is leveraging a really a pricing, price comparison uh, engine, right? It's it's a meta tool that lets you. It's a it's a simple. Uh, yes, it is in a sense. Uh, it it relies on a network effect because uh, the more options that they come uh, for compare come up for comparison, you will go to Trivago. If you don't find enough options, enough customers don't come in. So I think Trivago is also an example. Yes. Uh, so the same hotel room is priced at different prices. Hmm. Now one, one person may get a customer. Yeah. Then rest of them may lose their customer. See, but that's that's what uh, a competitive marketplace dynamics lets you do, right? It lets you provide value at the right price. So you know, it, I, and, and I think that's really important. So I think we spoke about different aspects of your business, right? I think the ability to provide value at the right price is what you specifically uh, are talking about right now. It's if if I can if. Uh,